just need to do the last little touches and done oh hey didn't see you there it's Garth here from Murphy's Film this is a very cheesy intro today from the title of this video and the thumbnail you've clicked on this to see how I edit my photos in Lightroom before we get started I'm gonna go make a quick drink So let's get down to business. So all right guys, welcome to Lightroom. I actually used a new Lightroom. I don't use Lightroom Classic anymore. I've recently transitioned over, mostly because I get my lab scans actually emailed to me. So from there, I can just download them straight to my MacBook and actually just import them. Because sometimes I do actually edit my photos on, on my iPad too, because I've also got the Apple Pencil. So sometimes I do it on the iPad if, if, if it's just a really quick and nasty to upload to Instagram. But if it's images like these two that I'm about to be showing you, these are the ones that I actually take more time and effort over. So I'll use my actual MacBook. So there's two specific images that we're gonna be editing today. And it's not this one that's on screen now. It's the two that you've seen last week. It's the two coffee shots that you've seen. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a run through of the complete raw scan to the final edit that you've seen in that video and how I got there. So, with all that being said, we're gonna go to the actual images. So I think it's only right that in this video we start with the first image that you've seen in that original video from last week being the top-down shot. So, like I said in that original video, I'm gonna have to do a slight crop on this, and there's a little bit of color shift, obviously with it being a expired film in the first place. Hindsight, I really should have done it on some fresh film, but it was also just to finish off a roll so this won't be a full Lightroom tutorial, this is just gonna be how I edit these specific images. And most of these techniques I use on the majority of my image anyway. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring in that crop that I mentioned before. I always keep the little uh, constraint aspect ratio. These were obviously shot in the Hasselblad, so I'm gonna keep it as a square format. And I'm just gonna bring the bottom in ever so slightly, just so we're not cutting off the left side of the cup handle. So just there is gonna have to do us. I could probably change the aspect ratio, but then I feel a bit like, what's the point? Because I'm shooting on the Hasselblad, which shoots square, so I don't know. That's just a personal thing. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is down in the bottom here, we've got some scratches from the table. The easiest and quickest way to get rid of them is just gonna be using the spot healing tool. Nine times out of 10, I don't have to use the spot healing tool for any of my lab scans. The scans that I do at home, I do. But obviously, because this is meant to be a nice clean image, I'm just gonna get rid of them very quickly. Use the heel part of the brush. Get it across, make the brush a touch bit bigger. Missed. And just like that, that makes the image look a whole lot cleaner already. So what I am noticing about this is the light of the image is coming a lot from the top left and the top right, because obviously that's where the light boxes were. And this bottom left hand corner, well basically the whole bottom of the image is a bit darker than the rest. So for that, we're gonna use the light gradient tool just for the very bottom there. And we're gonna bring the exposure up by about half a stop. 3.5 seems good. Now that's the only bit of the image I want there. The rest of it all looks even to me. I'm happy with the rest of it. So now I'm gonna go up into the usual edit and palettes that all us photographers use. And I'm just gonna make me slight adjustments to the rest of the image. So for starters, I wanna bring the contrast up just a touch, just to add a little bit more darkness into the beans. I'm actually gonna up the highlights just a little bit. I say just a little bit, I've upped it by 20, by 20, 30 points to make the, the white of the table more white. And 
just looking at this, I'm just noticing some more little stray parts either of the table or of the bean, so I'm just going to clean that up. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with how the table looks. I'm going to bring. Mm, I'm going to leave the shadows where they are. See, the, the difficulty I'm having here bringing up the whites is the cup handle on the left very nearly blends in to the table, and that's not what we want. We want that little bit of definition. So I'm just going to leave the whites on just plus, plus five, and the blacks we're going to leave as is. Now, personally, I think this is because of the color cast of the actual 160 VC. I'm going to bring down the temperature a little bit, just so it's a little bit cooler, just to give that more white kind of look only just a touch we don't need to do a lot here so minus four is absolutely spot on for me but with that being said and this images these two images are going to be both be going to instagram i want a little bit of vibrancy not a lot just a touch so the next thing about this image is that the bag of beans is slightly skew if and if you know a little bit off center so for stuff like that, I always use the geometry tool and I just literally go to auto. Now that brings everything up, so it's completely flat, but I don't like that. don't like how that's worked this time. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the crop tool. I'm going to do restrain as again, and just do a slight, slight rotation. But the only problem with that is we're cutting off the top of the coffee cup so with that being said I'm just gonna leave it as is because I don't want to do too much manipulation I still want it to look how it was shot I, I don't do a lot of that um, like over manipulation in Photoshop and all that kind of stuff I'm not into all that I know Peter McKinnon says to do it a lot but I'm not a fan right so looking at this image a little bit more I'm actually going to bring the saturation and the vibrance back down to zero because I just I'm just not a fan of how it looks. And with that being said, personally for this image, I'm quite happy with that. So there's one last thing I want to do to this image just before I, I'm say I'm happy and I'm done with this one, and that is I was as I was saying before with the cup handle in the top left, we're just going to bring that so it's a little bit more obvious that the cup handle's there and not completely cut off. So for that we're going to use the radial gradient, if I'm saying that right, and we're just going to select over the cup handle. Bring that in a touch because it doesn't need to be the rest of the cup, just the handle. As I say, usually I don't do this kind of stuff, but it's because it's a product shot. And I just, sometimes I do do this stuff, but it's not often. But obviously these kind of, pro these kind of shoots that I do, I do enjoy. I do need to make it look how it looked to me really so with the cup handle selected what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decrease the contrast in that that specific area and it's not a massive difference but although I have had to take the contrast basically all the way down you can now see there's a huge difference there and you can actually tell that the cup handle is a cup handle and it's not blending in with the table and with that being said I'm happy with this image and I'm going to move on to the next image So now on to the second image. This is obviously the second image where this was shot with the 50 mil. If you watched the previous video, if not, it's linked up there or there. I can never remember which side YouTube puts it on. So the first thing that I'm seeing with this image is there's a slight border around the image where it's been scanned by the lab. So I'm just gonna bring that crop in ever so slightly. And the second glaring thing that I can see with this image is over on this side here where we had the white reflector and um, you can see the creases in the reflector so the first thing I'm going to do there is bring the whites right up to try and make it a completely washed out white background so the problem with bringing the whites too high is obviously it's going to blow out the, the coffee bag which we don't want and it's also going to blow out the coffee cup so we're bringing the whites up there and we're also going to bring the highlights up and that seems to be doing a lot better job. Now it hasn't completely got rid of the crease but it's done a really good job at it. 
so I'm just going to take the spot healing brush like we did for the last photo and just go over that and a little bit here too and that one completely failed okay so even if you, you might not have been able to see that with YouTube's compression I can see it and just looking at a bit more there's one more crease just up there so I'm happy with that background now so from here I'm going to concentrate on the rest of the image so I was fooling around before I actually started recording this trying to fill in the blanks of the table with the spot healing tool but used in clone so there's actually coffee beans further back than there actually was but I'm, I'm, I wasn't happy with how it looked so we're just going to leave that as is and we're just going to play with the contrast we're going to boost the contrast just a touch we don't want too much bring the exposure down by about just about that much but 0.20 also going to bring the shadows down to roughly about minus 15 and the blacks we're going to keep as is because we don't want the the blacks of the light here or the blacks of the the black on the cup to be completely washed out Also, quick tip, if you press J on your keyboard, and I'll just drag the blacks, you can see the parts that have actually blown out from being too dark. Same again, it also works for your highlights, except they go red. So I'm actually more pleased with the light balance in this one, as in the color temperature, but we're gonna try bring it down just a touch as well. Just so the white on the bag looks more actual white. I'll turn that clipping off. Yeah, just so that white up there actually looks white rather than like a washed out kind of grey, which it isn't. It was a it was a pure white on the bag. I don't I don't actually have the bag with me anymore as a reference point because I drank it all. And when I went to reorder some more of this coffee, they never had it in stock. But I've ordered some more of them because top notch guys. So personally i don't think there's much i really want to do to the second image most of it was just washing out the background so it's more of a complete white i know i could do a, a gradient or what i've done with the previous one where i made i just completely wash it out but i don't really feel like i need to do it with this one i don't think it's as bad so i'm just going to leave it i also know i do have the brush tool available to me in lightroom where i could just draw over it and just boost the contrast or boost the exposure in that specific point but I feel like that's taken a little bit too far away from the whole film photography thing I know it's similar to dodging and burning but nah I don't really fancy it I do ed obviously edit my scans but not to that extent so personally I don't think there's much more that I want to do to this image I'm just going to see what it would look like with a little bit more of a tighter crop but I, I'm not a fan of that. I purposely tried to fill the frame while I was shooting it, so we're gonna leave that crop out. So the last thing that I'm gonna do to both images, because I forgot to do it on the first, is come down to the effects panel here, and we're just gonna up the clarity by about five, is what I usually do on all my images, and come down to detail and do sharpening, and same again, do that by about five. You don't wanna over sharpen your images, otherwise it just looks ridiculous or to do too much clarity either. So I'm just gonna go back and do that with the original picture as well. Uh, clarity, sharpening. So this first, the, the image that we done first is a little bit more of a, I'm going a little bit over the top for my usual style of editing. What you've seen in the second image is a lot more of my usual style of editing when I'm just doing a, an Instagram upload or something like that. Play with the colours ever so slightly, boost the contrast if needed, bring in a slight crop and do some spot healing. And that's basically my workflow. <coughs> and if you guys haven't tried out the new Lightroom, not classic, just Lightroom, it's actually got a lot better. Especially if you do have an iPad, just install Lightroom, give it a try. It uploads between the two. I use Lightroom on my iPad, my, f my MacBook, and my phone, and my desktop computer. And just just to have it all uploading, saving, flicking between catalogs and all that kind of stuff, it's really handy.
So with all that being said, you guys have obviously already seen the images before and after, but I'll post the before and after next to each other here. It's been Garth here from Murphy's Film. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, a share, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. Ring the bell if you want to, and if you've stuck, if you've stuck around this far, let's see if we can get Iron Brew's attention on Instagram. Whatever my latest post is at this time, just please tag Iron Brew in it for me. Peace out.